Sometimes there are stories that you are told that you think are interesting, um, revelatory, maybe even helpful to the narrative. There's nothing you have to cover the story visually. There's nothing that you have to further illustrate what someone's talking about. And if you're doing a movie and it's full of visuals and you're trying to, cons you're trying to construct this consistent visual palette, even if it's on three different sort of wavelengths as far as photos, footage, stuff that you've shot, what have you, if you can't find something that is consistent in a way that you can tell that story and you have nothing, sometimes you just can't, you just can't use it. And that's really frustrating and sad, especially when, again, we're talking about truth and documenting events. Frankly, if something is so important, you figure out a way and sometimes it's like, you know, we can't all shoot interviews with six different cameras. And so you don't necessarily have the luxury of, I'll just cut all different ways to make sure it's fine. And so you get creative. There's a scene in the movie that is probably five and a half hours into the movie in part four of the documentary where you've gone through most of the trial, it's become the media circus that it is, and all of a sudden we get to this, the, the, deputy, the deputy DA, Bill Hodgman, clinically taking you through his version, his belief of what happened the night of the murders on June 12, 1994. So he had given me a presentation in his office, in the DA's office in Los Angeles, a couple weeks before I sat down with him and did an interview, and he went through this slideshow presentation that he gives to people in law enforcement when he talks about that case. And included is, you know, he gives pictures, included these pictures of, of the murder scene. Now, when we did the interview, I said, hey, Bill, do you mind just sort of running through that and giving me your version of events? That, you, know. you know, so for six and a half minutes, he sat there and clinically went beat by beat of what happened that night. And even listening to him, it was chilling. And there was an argument by some who I was working with that said, just do that. Just have him talk. You know, again, this notion of what is truth. He's, it's his version of what he believes. That it's, there's no videotape. No one knows exactly what happened. But he's telling us. And so there's, first of all, an instinct to say, oh, I don't want to edit this at all. It's so, well, it's so graphic. It's so personal to sort of what he, the 20 years he spent thinking about this. It's so specific. I want to include everything. And then you go, well, you know what? I can't just have six minutes of a guy on screen. This is the sort of practical I, as a filmmaker. Well, I just can't have six minutes of him on screen saying this. And also, what's the best version of this scene? Is that that? Him purely recollect, you know, recollecting about what he thinks happened? Or can we add visuals? Can we turn this in to a more emotionally wrenching anecdote than him just sitting in a chair? And then when you know that actually there are these murder photos, these photos of the crime scene that exist, and they aren't photos, by the way, that I might feel compelled to otherwise use, except for the fact that here's a guy in his position clinically, dispassionately, going through what he believed happened, that is almost the only way I would have ever thought of using such graphic photos because there is a real purpose to it. There's a real purpose to understanding the brutality of the crime, and there's a real purpose for you to sit there and realize, like, you need to deal with what is happening here, what happened. You need to deal with the way that this guy is talking about it so soberly versus the spectacle that this trial has become. You need to, as a viewer, stop. And whatever you think of O.J. Simpson, why don't you look at this, and why don't you see if you can look at him the same way after that? Now, the point being is that that scene ends up being this horrific thing. Now, there's no music, there's sound design, but there are cho there's so many choices that go into how am I going to portray this, especially portray, portray something that is so sensitive, and that could be absorbed in so many diff I mean, different ways by so many people. And so that's, those are the things that are sort of, you have to really make sure that you are making the correct choices. Mm -hmm.